All right, everybody, welcome. Okay, in accordance with the provisions allowed by Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, the September 13, 2021 public meeting of the Lakeville Park Commission will be held re remotely. However, to view this meeting in progress, please go to facebook.com slash lakecam. You do not need a Facebook account to view the meeting. This meeting will be recorded and available to be viewed at a later date at www.lakecam.tv. All right, before, before we get started, I'd just like to introduce uh, a new, the new assistant to the town administrator. Uh, hopefully, could I say your name right, Christina Katsouridis? Yes, that's correct. Beautiful. All right, so <clears throat> welcome, Christina. I don't know if you want to just give us a quick, quick little intro of who you are. Uh, that would be great. Sure. I am. Um, I wasn't. I. I think likely what I'll do is um, I'll. I just wanted to introduce myself, and then I'll yep. spend the the rest of the meeting sort of kept watching it live on Facebook. Um, but yeah, as Joe said, I'm the new assistant to the town administrator. Um, I, I work at down in town hall. Um, I'm I'm in the office with Tracy. Um, and part of my role as, as RE sees it is to be sort of a liaison between the boards and commissions and to try to um, you know, help make processes move smoothly. So um, I really just wanted to, to come on tonight to introduce myself um, and to say that I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Um, I emailed a little bit back and forth today with Nellie and she and I um, are gonna spend some time next week so that I can get up to date on all that's going on with the Parks Commission. All right, well, welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Okay, so Christine, you, can, you can hang on if you want to take off as a few, but uh, feel free. Thanks. All right, all right, first item on the agenda, discuss with possible vote on received field contracts. Now, we got, I think it was four field contracts we got. Is that correct, Nelly? Two from soccer, one from baseball, and then one from softball. Correct? Yes. <laughs> It scared me there. Sorry, did you want to review the softball one tonight? I thought you were going to uh, look over that schedule first. No, I, I spoke to them. They're they, they, they going to amend the, the two dates, change the hours. We're all set. So we can talk about that there. Because okay. they're going to get started this week. Uh, tonight. Okay. Matter. So um, I, I just you know, want to just take a look at the first one. That, um, the one for baseball. Um, I think it was the Ken Lally one. I want to look at that one first. Everybody should have gotten a copy of that already today. Mm-hmm. Does everybody have that available? It's in my email, but that's okay. So I, I guess we'll just, it, you know, we got the first page. It, again, I mean, uh, looks like they're going to be used in field number four. Um, now, Scott, on this one here, it checked off. It says 12 players, three teams. So is that 12 players a team? Or is that a total of 12 players? <laughs> Scott? Sorry, that would be 12 per team. That's what I thought. So it's a total of 36 kids for this fall season, correct? Correct. So uh, he wants it on uh, Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and on Thursday, Saturdays and Sundays from 9 to 4. Correct. Is that, does that conflict with anything or not a problem? As far as I know, Freetown Lakeville is not using Ted Weems Camp. Okay. So the... Let's, let's talk about, I guess we also want to talk about the fee as well. Um, in the past, we've, we've charged them an AAU rate. I, I know Ken uh, spoke to us about a meeting or two ago to go to a, a set fee of $20 per player like we do with the other teams. Uh, in exchange, he's got a list of things he was going to do uh, at the park itself, help us out, clean the fields, fix up things, and things like that. Uh, Correct. That plus, a, plus right. in the spring, he'd like to bring a couple more teams. Right. So does anybody have any discussion if we go with $20 per player for Ken's teams and allow them the use of the field per the schedule? So the, the contract says, it says 3,000 though. Is that correct? No, that is that That's, is not correct. No. That, that has to be changed. That, that part of it's gotta be changed uh, to the $20 per player. Well, do we have an updated contract before we're voting on it? No, it was just received today, and that was an error that was sent off. Uh, if we're changing the fee, we can absolutely change it. I can initial it as of the state of the change, and Ken can initial it as well. So we can move forward, but that's up to you guys. 
as as far as the improvements that are going to be made what are they are they written down and what's agreed upon they were written down and we went over most of them um i believe at the last meeting so yeah. can that be included in the contract where this 20 dollar fee per head is I'm, I'm just looking for some accountability. If we're gonna sign a contract with somebody and they say they're gonna do something that we, we have it written down, if we're agreeing on a different price than that's listed on the email that was just sent, then I, th I think that we, if we're gonna vote on something then it just has to be uh, it, what's it was, really gonna be. It was written down and proposed at the last meeting. Everybody got a copy of it. Yeah. I can read you a little bit of what it was if, you, if you'd like. Okay, he says, this is install new bases, pitchy mound, home plate, fix and repair damaged batting cages, reconstruct and upgrade the old bullpen in mounds, as well as other stuff in the spring. So that's in the, in the spring and then to be completed by the end the, of, end of that the, season? That's in, that's in the fall and going into the spring. This contract is for this fall, and he's going to do stuff this fall and then more in the springtime. I don't have a set date when these things are going to be done. Uh, like I said when Ken spoke to us last time, um, I, I take the man for his word that he's going to do this. Scott, you've known him for quite a while and all that. So um, I, I don't have a problem with that piece. But the, the part I want to talk about is make sure that we're voting on use of the fields, $20 per player. It looks like it would be $720 based on the 36 kids total. Is that how you read, everybody reads that? And Nelly will make the update with the give it the three thousand put down to twenty dollars per player, like all the other contracts. Darlene? Well, I think it's important to make note of the of what he's doing in the contract because you might get another AAU team that comes in and says, "Well, we'd like to do what Ken Lally did." Now we know Ken and we know he's going to do it. I think it'd be important to have it documented somewhere that this is what's going to happen in that contract that Nelly's going to initial for the, the right fee. I don't have a problem with it, but I think it needs to be in the contract. Yeah, well, we can include that page that email Ken sent in the contract without a doubt. That's important, just just for future reference. You know, Nelly, if you can, Right, sorry about it, I didn't interrupt, Darlene. Nelly, if right. you want to note that in that section on page three per Ken's attachment, is that all right? Sure thing. Yep, I can put it all together and then I can scan it all in together so then it, it looks like it's one group of items the, the one thing i suggested nelly do on these contracts we only got the first page there are three pages to the contract so on the third page is that's where our piece goes in is this when we talked about it when we voted on it what the fee was and maybe uh, approved it uh, i suggested nelly fill that in and whoever's responsible for that sport gets that whole contract a copy to review it and keep it while nelly sends it back to the uh the group so whoever, whoever has AAU say in this case would get a contract, a copy of the final contract uh, that we're signing off on, we're, we're agreeing to. That makes sense. Any more discussion on this one here? <coughs> Anybody wanna make a motion we move forward with this? Same way. Make baseball? a motion we move forward with the uh... A, a, addendums to the contract and the rate change to twenty dollars a head. Second. Okay, motion is seconded. So the roll call vote. A yes means you approve of the contract with the amendments. A no means you do not. Um, Darlene, how do you vote? Yes. Paula, how do you vote? Yes. Tony. Yes. Scott. Yes. Okay. Motion been approved. Cool. Now, if you could just take care of that, those little tweaking and send that out, that'd be great. Sure thing. Okay. And I believe they're going to be starting this week if they haven't already. It's said September 1st, time frame. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one up, let's look at, I'm just pulling them as I get them. Sorry, they guys know no rhyme or reason. Three, three Town Lakeville Soccer, submitted by, looks like uh, Derek Loud. Everybody have that one? Uh, a, a little couple of some information missing here. Um, they don't say the number of players, so we don't know what the fee is going to be. They may know 
I'm sorry, they, he sent that separately in an email um, and it was 305 players. Okay. And just for clarification, I know it says Monday to Monday through Friday, four till dark. Uh, Saturday all day. Is that is that eight to seven? I mean, are they there all day on Saturday? Um, from past experience, um, they would be in town games that would play until approximately two to three o'clock in the afternoon, and then for some of the older kids that there aren't enough teams to have in town, they play amongst. Um, some of the South Coast leagues uh, teams, and they play afternoon travel games, um, which would go probably right up until dark. Those ones. So, do they play on Sunday at all? Is Sunday the day to say they don't play at all on Sundays, right? They didn't check that Sunday. Right? Was that? They didn't check Sunday. Right. I just want to make sure that's right. So, 305 players, five days a week, Saturday all day, Monday through Friday, four till dark. So the fee would be what six hundred six thousand ten dollars, sixty one hundred. Maybe my math. Yep, you're right. Sixty one hundred. Wow. Uh, Nelly, did we get a check for that yet? No, it's in the mail. Yeah. I have to double check I, with them. I um, all. The the accountant sent it out, and I still haven't received it as of today's mail. So I got to check in with her. Okay. Anybody have any questions about this one? And I'm assuming they're using all the fields over there, that whole soccer area. I tell you what, they didn't check out what field number. So is that what they use, Scott? One, one two, three, uh, two over there? You know, past experience, yeah. I mean, okay. you know, late in the afternoon on a Saturday, they might only be using two of the four fields, but it could be any one of the two or four fields. I mean. Anybody have any questions? Okay, I'll let the 20 hand a motion and we accept this contract. Anybody want to make one? I moved. Make a motion to accept the uh, Freetown Lakeville Soccer Club contract. Second. Any discussion, folks? Okay, there's a roll call vote. Scott, how do you vote? Yes. Darlene? Yes. Tony? Yes. Paula? Yes. All right, contract is accepted. Same thing, Nelly, if you don't mind. The check for 6100 is in the mail. Next one, it's one of the soccer one here for Free League Women's Soccer. Uh, looks like it's uh, two fields, four to six in, uh, on Sundays or three to five after daylight savings time. 104 players. $2,080. What was that? $2,080. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the math. Darlene, obviously, it looks like it's a relative of yours, I take it? Yeah. Okay. So you can. Okay. I'll, you, can I'll upstate. You, you don't have to vote on this one here then. Uh, anybody, anybody, any questions on this one? I make, make a motion, a motion to accept the contract. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. Okay. Let's do a roll call vote on voting on the four to six, you know, three to five on Sundays for women's soccer from Free Lake. Yeah, Free Lake women's soccer. Uh, Tony, how do you vote? Yes. Paula? Yes. Scott? Yes. Okay. The motion is approved. Women's soccer is all set to go. And lastly, we have uh, Free Lake Softball for John Pond. Uh, they're going to be using seven days a week over there. Um, there was one little minor hiccup with a blooper ball, but I spoke to them today, changing their times on Tuesday and Thursday night to end at, at 545 on field one. So we got blooper ball playing as well as Free Lake playing on the other fields. So um, there's 110 kids. Uh, I think we got a check for 2,200. Nelly, already on this one. Any 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 questions on this one? All right. Anybody, anybody want to make a motion for this one? Make a motion to accept the contract with softball. Second. Get a second. Second, it is. All right. Let's vote on acceptance. Tony, how do you vote? Yes. Darlene. Yes. Paula. Yes. Scott. Yes. All right. Motion's approved. Nelly, again, your magic. Let them know. And I'll, I can take that one. They send that one to me. Because I get John Pond. Sure thing. Okay. All right. 
Okay, folks, then moving on. Next one is discuss with possible vote on Lakeville Haunted House contents purchase. Uh, I'll just give a little hit. Looks like Tony spoke to the guy, uh, Mike Sylvia and Harrison Ingram out of New Bedford for, uh, they would like to purchase the contents of the Lakeville Haunted House. Um, I think everybody got what Tony sent out. Just an agreement. Uh, any, any any discussions on that at all? Uh, the, the only thing I will caution is, uh, something like this here, when there's going to be an agreement, we have to review it before we prove it. Um, so I guess the question I have is, when is this a one-time one shot deal? Are they going to come down for an hour, take everything, or what's it going to be, Tony? Um, it, it would be something that, yeah, I, I met them down there. I don't, I think it's going to take a little bit more than an hour, but um, you know, they get the contents out, they have access for it, and then it gets locked back up. Um, so I'll coordinate that with them as soon as they pay, pay the money, then get that. And it's only the uh, any props and costumes. Good. So, good, night, Darlene. Do we need a motion to, to accept their offer, or? Well, we I'm, have... gonna get, I'm gonna get to that. Yeah, I think we we will just so we on on the green with this one here. Um, okay. Just I just have a couple just a couple of questions. Uh, liability wise, are we gonna have limited amount of people in there? We don't want them to bring a gaggle of people all go through there uh, with the risk of the safety of the building. So how's that going to work, Tony? Yeah, I can limit it to two people under my supervision. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Um, Just getting my heating pad. Sorry. <laughs> what's the timing on doing this, Tony? Because it looks like in early October, this might be coming down. So they, can they do it soon? As, as soon as we approve this, I, I'll be on them to get to get it done. I mean, I want to see it get done as fast as possible so that we can put this behind us. All right. Um, anybody have any discussion on this? Sell it. So I'll, I'll, make, a mo I'll, I'll make a motion we accepted uh, the agreement as written. $3,000 from this group in New Bedford for the purchase of, uh, of the all props, costumes, and makeup on a Lakeville haunted house. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. Roll call vote. Scotty, how you vote? Yes. Paula? Yes. Darlene? Yes. And Tony? Yes. There you go. It is a move. move. Tony, if you can handle that, make sure you get to have a check read out, written out to Town of Lakeville. Okay. Make sure we cash that before they come in the building. Got it. There you go. All right. Moving on. Next one. Discuss. Discuss process for work orders. Um, who put this one in? Nelly, is that you? That was me. Uh, just away. because we had a couple of work orders that were coming through and there's sort of a new procedure to streamline the process and make it, make it a little bit more organized that came out of the town administrator's office. So anything that we're gonna need a work order for, um, we need to have it approved at a meeting. So that way it can be documented even on the work order that it was approved at a meeting, what account is it coming out of, et cetera. Um, so I don't know how everybody would like to work this. We can either um, tell me to fill it out and then I can uh, put it on the agenda for the next meeting. We can discuss it as new business and then set it up for the next meeting to vote on or uh, said commissioner can fill out the form themselves uh, you know, send it to me. I'll I'll keep it on file and I'll put it on the next agenda for voting and then push it to process. So whichever way we just need a process on who's doing it, how we're submitting it, how we're getting it on the meeting, and then it can go through. What would be easiest for you, Nellie? Is that either the commissioners fill out the work order or for you to do it? Um, I'm fine with the commissioners working out the filling out the work order. Sometimes you guys are are eyes on whatever needs to be done where I'm not. Um, so I think Tony, like you, had sent it to me, and that worked out fine because now I can see what it is that you want. I can put it on the agenda for the next meeting and keep it aside. Once it's approved, I can submit it over to the building commissioner. Now, do you get to keep a, a running list of what ones to open when you submit them? What yeah, I'm gonna have a binder set up at the office and I'll keep a copy of them in that binder so that way we can flick through. And as the item is done, um, we can just write on it complete, file it away and just only keep the pending ones in the binder so we can see. The, the latest work order form, do we all have that? Or can you send out the blank one for everybody to have so we can go from there? Yes, did I send that to everybody? I can't remember now. I, I don't think so. If you could, that'd be no. great. Okay. 
Yes, absolutely. So how does everybody want to do it? Email. No, how do you want to communicate once you create one? Do you want to send them all to Nelly and have Nelly just bring it to the office to the and board? leave it? And and have Nelly put it on the agenda. Okay. Nelly, what for you? Any other questions, anybody? Nelly? All set? So well, I, I do have a question because in the memo from Ari, it was kind of saying things that there was a couple different categories of maintenance. Could you could you clarify those, Nelly? So it's um, these work orders are just for non routine maintenance. Um, I think for us, um, some of the stuff is routine maintenance. Um, it is probably not the same as the other commissions since we have so much going on. We might have to touch base with say Franklin or uh, Nate or Teddy before we submit the order to ask them, is this fall under our regular maintenance or not? Because we're not always into that schedule. So are we gonna have to do work orders to get stuff done with Franklin? I don't think so. I think that's only if it's like a bigger project, say like the, the Clear Pond um, donation where he had to come in with equipment and get that done. Uh, that got submitted as a work order so we could have that there. But something like if Ryan needs machinery at Ted Williams camp to do something, I don't think that requires a work order. So you're seeing like like a, a roof to me is is routine maintenance. Like if you don't take care of a roof, then it, it needs to be like fixed or replaced. But you're saying that that needs, even though that might be what I consider routine maintenance, that has to have a work order. I, it, it, I think it depends really. Um, I think we're gonna have to touch base with Franklin and Nate and Teddy as these things come up to ask them what they think. So it has to go through all three of those people to get what we want. Oh no, it depends on whatever work needs to be done. Like if that's Franklin's purview versus Nate's purview, you know what I mean? How do we determine what's which one's purview? Nate is really building versus Franklin's going to be like our, you know, uh, roads, um, the grounds, right. Yeah. The roof would definitely need to be a work order. That is materials that would be, have to be paid for and all that. So that would be a, a work order for sure. And painting but, of buildings, work order? If it's going to take people and all that, yes. It's going to take time, so. time and people to do that, yes. I guess rather err on the side of caution, I'd rather have Nelly try to speak to them and they say, hey, you don't need one. Uh, we say, hey, we didn't put one in and we delay it a couple more weeks. So when in doubt, ask Nelly. We can always get ahead of, you know, pass it by those guys to see what they think. I think this is a nice way of going through Nelly and should keep track of ones that have opened for us. And, and, and also, if, you, if it's something to do with electric or plumbing or carpentry, those are contract workers for the town. So I would think anything in that purview would be a work order. That would go through Teddy and, and Nate or whoever. Yeah. Uh, just one thing, I know if, if there's something like an electrical problem, it's a you know safety hazard. We can get a hold of them right away and, and don't wait for a meeting to come up uh, on that one there. You know, in case there's a you know safety hazard, wires down, you know, arcing out on the ground, people are walking by, things like that. So um, there are emergency situations. We get a hold of Nate and get done right away. Are there any current work orders open, Nelly? But the only one is that one for Clear Pond, which is still with Highway. Okay. And then we have the one for um, the timer on the volleyball lights to approve tonight to move forward with that. But the only one that's been submitted uh, officially is that one for Clear Pond. So Joe, what about the toilet for the, uh... the toilet? That's what, yeah. I, was just, I thought we had one for the toilet, the bathroom in the pines. I that don't was... think I saw that. Was that that, that was work back, might like, have that might have been in the works before this process. I, I can't, I, any, like any week or so, I speak to Teddy on that one there and Nate. So we're still, it's in the works somewhere. It's on, it's on their list somewhere, somehow. But yeah. it's just not getting addressed. I, I got to follow up with Teddy, matter of fact, tomorrow on that one. So, so we, voted, we voted on that one. We, we might as well fill out a work order just to have it documented. Then. I, I believe there was one already uh, created for that. I think I might have done that one. Like I said, I think it was back in April. Um, but I'll make sure Teddy, if he doesn't have one, we'll get one out there to it. They know about it. It's on their list. So I'll make sure in case, we, in case he didn't have it. Darlene. I think he has one. I'm 99.9% .9 sure yeah. he has one. 
Yeah, I thought I did one back then, but I can't I can't recall. But yeah, yeah. I'll follow up with him. He, he's well he's well aware of that one there. Yeah. Uh, I did for that one they just been talking about. I did put a sign up in that one bathroom, that one half that's open uh, for the water is by hand washing only, uh, not drinking the water out of the sink. All right, as per Nate's uh, and the Board of Health's uh, requirements on that one. So, right, we're hoping to get the other side open. We'll do the same thing. Maybe we'll not, uh, either use the sinks or put those hand washes and things in hand sanitizers instead of the sinks. Uh, but we'll talk about that one there. But hoping to get that toilet replaced soon. So, we all set on the work orders. When in doubt, speak to Nelly. Uh, I think we'll go through her and we'll go from there and see how it works out. Nelly, thanks for volunteering for coordinating that for us. So, Nelly, are you going to send us out work orders so that we have a? Yeah. Yes, I will send you, I will forward you the email that had come out from Ari that gives the procedure and the two different work orders, one for building and one for grounds. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right, moving right on. Next one, discuss with possible voter on the work order for the work on the timer at the volleyball lights. Scott, you have intimate with this one. Very. Tell us about it. Very intimate. Um, let me start by saying that particular timer has not worked correctly since it was put in two plus years ago. We have constantly had problems with it. Um, back as far as two or three months ago, the electrician was out there and replaced something, um, a motor or something. Um, but here and again, we're back to the same situation. Um, it's not working properly. The lights are staying on all night. They're shutting off. They're not coming back on. Um, right now, they're being done manually uh, by the volleyball players because I got tired of going down there every single day to change the clock. So we need a work order to get the electrician back there and either fix it or put in a new timer. Any discussion on that one? Anything else? Anybody want to put a motion in, right? To create the work order for the timers at the volleyball area? Sure. Um, I'll make a motion to put in a work order to fix the timers for volleyball. Second. Second it is. Any discussion? Let's vote on it. Scott, what do you think? Yes, please. Paula? Yes. Tony? Yes. Darlene? Yes. Motions approved. <laughs> Who's going to create that work order? Nelly, you going to do that one, or is Scott going to do that order to Nelly? Scott already did it. Okay. So now Perfect. it just needs to get submitted. That's all. Okay. Thank you. All Thank right, you. Next one. Discuss the locks on the buildings at Ted Williams. Um, Tony, I think this was yours. Um. Yeah, I spoke to um, Deb, Misho, and Jamie because there, when we walked around there, there was some of the locks that we, we just didn't have keys to. Is that lock, uh, is that building theirs? That, that... Excuse me. Oh. Excuse me. If you're talking about the, the, the volleyball, I mean, the horseshoe building, we have keys to it. They're in our lockbox. I requested them. Over a year ago, and they gave us a set of keys. The, the, the first one, sorry, so, so the one, the one, the question that came up is the building between the horseshoe one and the volleyball. Those two new buildings, there's an old ratty building in between that needs painting. There's a lock on it. Trying to find out who owns that building or who who's content that's, in there. That's horseshoes. We have the keys. That's horseshoes. That's uh, so horseshoes has two of them, two buildings. Yes. Yeah. One is an original Ted Williams camp dorm and the other one they put up okay so the original one they, they still use that building yes okay um somebody might want to throw some paint on it one of these times uh that's an that's a need of repair for sure i'll put it in a work order it'll, it'll probably be low on the list but <laughs> like what do you think um some paint I, and, 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 and i guess we talked about locks is there any i know we had a box full of locks in, in the uh, in the office there um, it'd be nice, Nelly, if you could let us, let me know, don't want to say it now, whatever the, the combination is on that box to get in there, to get the keys. Um, oh. I'll, I'll send you a text. Thank you. Cause, uh, yeah, uh, I think we need to go through those, that pile of keys and see where it goes, where if we can relabel those, maybe they're all labeled. The last time I was over there. We, we did it, that. We took a lot of time and threw away a lot of keys and labeled as many as we could. Okay. Cause I want to make sure we have 
We should have keys to all the buildings on Ted, uh, Ted Williams. Correct. Uh, if we yeah. don't have a lock, we've requested keys. And for the most part, we have the keys. So do we know which, like, like the snack bar at one point, we didn't have a key for it. Someone said maybe maintenance had it. But do we have that one now in our box? I, I believe they changed the lock. So we'll have to ask for another key. The uh, reason we don't put a green lock on there is because then we'd be handing out a key, which everybody yeah. and their brother would have. That, that's why we have the green locks now. Just to give you a little history, there were locks at Ted Williams Camp that had been there for 25 years and gone through multiple employees and other people who had the keys. So we were having problems with anybody and everybody having access to half the buildings on the camp. So that's why we decided back about four years ago to purchase a new set of locks and be stingy with the keys. I mean, the board members are entitled to have a key by all means. You want a key to sets of keys in, in, in the office that we can give you. Um, but uh, we just didn't want anybody and everybody having sets of keys and never turning them back in and then having access to everything at Ted Williams Camp, John Pond, and Clear Pond. All right, so are we confident that we have keys for all the locks in all the parks? John Pond, Clear Pond, Ted Williams. Uh, Clear Pond is, is, is all green locks, and, and then there's the special locks on the doors, which we have the keys for. And um, John Pond, we have those keys for the bathroom. Yeah, we got a couple of keys. I've I've got I've got sets of those on all of them. You know, on the, yep. and, on the and there's more in the office. Yeah. And then scattered throughout the camp is the green locks. Um so that you know we had we had keys and, and Ryan has a set of keys and 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 Franklin has a set of keys and Nate has a set of keys for those green locks, but not everybody. Just because that's why we changed the locks to begin with. Right. So I, I think that the Tony's point, it was we were trying to find out who owned that building there. No one seemed to know. Now we know it's horseshoes. Uh, yep. No one seemed to know who owned that building there. And there was and, a lock on there. we do have a set of keys for horseshoes. Okay. So as long as we have keys for all those buildings, that's, uh, that's a plus. And we, we had keys for baseball, but I believe the, I believe the snack stand lock has been changed. This was a couple of years ago. Tony, does that address everything you had there on that one? Yep. Okay. All right. Okay, next one, item number six, discuss updates on the fall field contracts. Um, I sent out a message to everybody earlier in the week about a statement to add about the uh, food providers. Did everybody see that? Not out ahead if you did, guys. Because we, we would like to add that even to these fall contracts on page two, if we can add that, if we can agree to add that statement on there. I'll read the statement for those of you who might not have had it. it. Says the use of mobile food providers, food trucks, ice cream trucks, et cetera, is the responsibility of the league group persons that hired them. As part of this consideration, the hiring authority must ensure that all applicable permits and approvals are obtained in accordance with the town of Lakeville's requirements. These requirements extend to the operation of snack bars, which must also comply with the town's permits and approval requirements. Uh, this was in response to, uh, we talked about uh, food trucks some several meetings ago. Uh, we said that we are not responsible for them, that we're going to put the onus on the people who would hire them. So that statement, we we're going to add to all contracts, letting everybody know when they sign off that if they're going to get one for an event, they're going to be responsible for it. They're going to pass through the town of Lakeville uh, requirements. So is everybody okay with adding that statement to the contracts for the fall and then modifying the other ones in the uh, in the off season. Any, any, any discussion on that? No? If not, we'll move forward doing that. Nelly, you and I will add that to the contracts. These four that just we passed today, and then uh, it's on page two, as we'll put it. Okay? Thank you, folks. Oh, Paula, Paula had something. Oh, sorry, Paula. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make an amendment to that uh, contract. Uh, about adding uh, the information about the food cuts. Uh, I believe it would be important 
for the teams or the events, uh, events manager, whomever, to notify the commission that they are going to put a food, they're going to be having a food court on the park grounds. I think this is important. Number one, it's common courtesy. Number two, uh, any food truck can come in there that was not hired by the event or the team. And I think we should be notified by those that are bringing a food court in and hiring it themselves. I think the commission deserves to be told. I mean, you talk about, you said food court, you're not talking about a food court, you're talking about what? A food, the, food vehicle? The food truck, the food truck, uh, or any of those uh, food services coming in. Uh, I think it would be nice if the teams and uh, event people, whoever are having something that is bringing in these uh, food things, just notify the commission. I think that's common courtesy. And I also feel that we're covering all the bases because uh, if food trucks come in in the future and they're not hired by the event or the team, um, then we don't know anything about it. Then I think we have, we, we won't have an issue until there's an issue. Then if they're coming in and we don't know about it, we'll never know about it. Right, but- So how, is, it, how does that pertain to that? It, it just means that the food, uh, the people that are hiring the food trucks for their event are notifying us. We know nothing about any other food items that come in. And it, it's a simple thing. Now all we have to do is uh, add the verbiage and uh, uh, just so that the uh, event people or the groups uh, just tell us, you know, uh, we're going to have a food truck in there. I think that's something we should outline on the crown, on the contract. But doesn't that statement cover that? No, I think it says that it's responsible that the uh, the event people or the groups are going to be responsible for the trucks. Blah blah blah. This really doesn't have anything with to do with their responsibility. It has to do with communication with the uh, commissioners. How do you how do you gonna how do you uh, how do you want that facilitated that communication? Uh, just that uh, that a phone call and email the text. What are you what are you looking for? Well, I'm just saying it should be added to the verbiage, verbiage that you uh, are putting forth on the contracts. Just so they you have it in writing that they know they should notify the commissioners. I, I think I, I think in the past they have. I know, well, I, know the, I, I know I the, agree. I, know the, I think it should be in the verbiage in writing. Though, because in because if we don't know, then a food trucks could just start showing up at any games and you know it, they could not have requested it. And then how would we know that? So if 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 the Apollo told me, what do you guys want to take that statement I just read that you all have and um, mark it up and send it to us then? Send it around so we take a look at it. Uh, what, why don't I just make the motion that we add the verbiage that the teams or events notify the park commission that they're going to have a food truck on on the uh, on the grounds. It's a Again, thing. All, all I'm saying is that if if, if there's a season, it's ten week season. If they decide in week number six they want to get a food truck, how do they notify us? They just uh, notify whoever's in charge of the park. Yeah, like they're, they're in charge call, of John Park. They can, call, right. they can even uh, notify Nelly or they can uh, notify the commissioner that's overseeing that particular part of the uh, park. All right, I think you know, it's to the rest of the board. Yeah, it's just, it's just, I uh, guess that's a good point. It would just be the commissioner who's in charge of that area, that field. That's fine. So it would not be the board, correct? Well, and then that person would then relay it to the board. Right. Darlene. Yeah, I think that's, I don't have a problem with that. The other thing too is, you could have a food truck come in that's making tacos and someone says, oh, there's a food truck at Ted Williams camp. Let me pull in with my food truck. And now they've got another taco truck pulling in. I think it's maybe just to keep it. So everybody's on the same page. Like, you know, it's not the same truck or a different company coming in, selling the same stuff, competing with the other truck. So I don't think it's a bad idea to let, let the person who's in charge of that 
field, whether it's John Fawn, it's you, Joe, or whatever, that there's a food truck coming in. Again, I don't know how you control it. I mean, you could have six food trucks. I wouldn't know if I wasn't around. You know, I, I wouldn't know that it was there. But... I, I will I will amend that. If you guys trust my judgment, I'll, I'll amend it and send it to Nellie so we can add it. So I won't, I won't be waiting for the next meeting. I'll just add the verbiage about notifying the responsible commissioner, period. All right. We'll do. <laughs> Nellie, I'll get with you on that one. Uh, so next one. You, oh, excuse me. Is that amendment accepted? We didn't mean to make a motion on that one there. And, and I make a we motion just, that we add it. It doesn't need a motion. We're just going to add that statement on the contracts. I Done think deal. it's an amendment that I think an amendment needs uh, to be accepted through a motion. There was no motion. There's, there's no motion on that one. Oh, okay. It's, it's not a motion item. It's no motion. I'm going to add it to the contract I said. I'll get to Nelly right after this. By the end, by tomorrow or so, we'll add it to page two. Period. Okay, I'm just I'm just concerned about the uh, uh, correct way of doing it, Joe. Item number seven: Contain discussion on the Parks Three Year Plan. Um, I sent this out a while back. I didn't have any feedback at all, and you know, please take a look at it, guys. Uh, this is our way to put a plan together for our parks. Uh, so it, it, it transcends every, you know anybody that's on the board. It's, we can keep it going um, year after year. It doesn't matter who's on the board at the time. It's it's plans that. We look at the immediate needs of the parks, the, what, what, a little bit further down the road, and then how, what we want to add to the parks. So yeah, I got sent you all a copy. Take a look at it. Um, we got to get some discussion on that there, what we want to see for the parks and what, what needs to be done right away and uh, what kind of preventive maintenance we want to add to the parks to see if we can fund it. And let's get people's ideas on what we can add to the parks as part of that phase three. So take a look at it um, and get your input, please, on that one. Uh, next one. Uh, again, I put together a spreadsheet for the, with the annual activities month by month, what has to happen at the parks. I think it's a good document for new members coming in or even members been here a while that we know each month what has to be done at each park. So I sent it out to everybody. Take a look at it. For those parks that you deal with, start populating it. Um, like I said, I think it's good information to have month after month. We know what's going on at each of the areas in case we forget something, you know, shutting the pump off. Uh, you know, drain out the septic, whatever it may be. Uh, we know when we have that and what events have to happen each month. So take a look at that if you could, and please provide, provide input. Uh, I think in the October, November timeframe, we'll finalize it. But uh, start looking at it now because it's a, uh, I think it's a pretty good document. It was around for a while, something that Scotty handed off to me, and I think we can, uh, we can just uh, update it for the parks we have. I think it's a good idea. Keep improving on it. Yeah, exactly. So. Guys, take a look at that. That'd be great. It was it, the reason why it was instituted was because the year I took over as chairman, we had nobody. There was nobody left from the old board. So it was like the blind leading the blind. Nellie had been on for like a year. So she and I sat down and, and, and penciled, penciled in some things that we thought of. And as we went along, we just kept adding to them, you know, so it was a starting point and yeah, it, it needs to be updated and changed and, and and rewritten constantly yeah but it, it was good stuff it's good good stuff in there stuff you don't even think about like again like shutting off the well at a certain park who thinks of that until it's too late things like that so uh please take a look at it and then uh and, and, and revise it as you can nelly you have this document I, I, yes i do I does everybody that, not have it i sent it to everybody and i think i it's even how we even put it on the uh, the google drive there um, but Nelly, uh, I'll send it out again if you want. I'll take a look at that. I'll, I'll send those two things out, the three-year plan and then the annual thing again to everybody. All right? But please take a look at it. All right, moving on. Next one, item number nine. Review the Boston Tavern payments. Nelly. Sorry. Yeah. I keep not hitting my mute button correctly. I'm sorry, can we do this at the next meeting? I just was looking at my spreadsheet to calculate some totals for everybody and I did something incorrectly. So I'm not getting the totals I'm looking to get to give to you guys. So give me till next meeting or even give me just till the end of the week and I'll share it with you and then we can review it at the next meeting. Plus That's I good. do just have an additional payment I uh, picked up today from them for August. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. 
All right, we appreciate it. Thank you. So that'll be a recurring event on the, uh, the agenda going forward anyway. All right, thanks. Next one, Loon Pond Lodge concession stand discussion updates. I think Darlene or Paula oh, might have yeah. something on this. Yeah, well, so, uh, so I spoke to Matt and he had a lot of questions for me. What kind of revenue do I think that it would take in? Uh, what would the hours be? You know, all of the all of the the answers are you know during the sports teams, you know, playing and all that stuff. He didn't sound very interested, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't really have a way to give him that information. You know, I know in years past it's been you know the boosters club or sports teams that have done it. So I think if if they're not interested, I think it's something we should maybe throw out to the Boy Scouts or the Brownies or the Cub Scouts or some group that may want to make some money. It's a wasted space that could bring in some revenue for somebody, but it doesn't sound like the Park Commission wants it. So I, I don't know what to say. You know, I, I don't know what to say about it. Well, I think we have to really consider th that a little bit more then. I mean, we have now, we just voted on what, four different contracts with, with ton, uh, so uh, once we have a schedule that's either on a shared uh, spreadsheet or document where we can see where everyone's playing at certain times, uh, I mean, it, it could be to our benefit to either hire somebody to, to do, I mean, I, I don't know, we're just letting it sit there and, and no food is getting made, so. Yeah. All of them work for a little bit of money. Yeah, um, exactly. I've oh. done it. All right. I, Matt came and looked at um, Claire Pond, and uh, I think he wanted numbers. I could give him approximate numbers for for this past summer as to how many people were at the beach and during what days and, you know, how many on the weekend. Um, I think his issue too was, I don't wanna call it an issue, but he raised the question as to whether or not there would be a beer alone allowed at the snack bars. I said, that's up to the town, but I personally feel that you're dealing with children's sports and they wouldn't wanna be uh, responsible or have the commission responsible for serving beer at uh, these events. But that was just a thought of his, so I don't know what he'll actually think about taking on uh, the snack class. I think he was going to give us an answer at some point, I thought maybe uh, by by this week. The other thing is, as far as the snack bars go, I, I, I know I addressed this last year. And if we had vendors take over the snack bars, there was uh, a couple uh, local business people interested in the snack bars. And I think as uh, Scott had mentioned a while back, you know, if they ran them, we could either charge a fee for the rental of the snack bar or get a, a percentage. But they're sitting there empty. There's gonna be a lot of sports going on. And I don't think we're that wealthy yet. So I don't want to just give it away to volunteers. I really would like to see us get some money from snack bars. They make a lot of money when they're operated properly. I, they also may bring in foods that haven't been around the park before, which, you know, uh, we mentioned Freetown Lakeville has a big snack bar and it's a lot of reasons, maybe one of the reasons why we we lost some of our teams. However, if we concentrate on getting some vendors and to bid, and if we can get them to take over the snack bars, I think we'll be on the positive side. And I, I just think it's a good idea to, to, to uh, really send it out to vendors as I had previously asked about um, over a year ago, but it's your, open to thoughts. Discussion, anyone? I mean, we had this discussion before. I know we voted it down. I don't know what's changed since then. I don't wanna just rehash something unless we have some new information on this. 
Um, I think I think what we we what changed is that the snack bars were not being fully operated. I don't think John Pond had anything other than what we had at Clear Pond, right? Uh, packaged foods, which no, that's incorrect. It doesn't do much. No, that's and, incorrect. They they had surf safe people there to grill there. They're serving full hot foods oh, as well. So oh, they, 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 use, packaged foods. they use more than packaged foods there. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, but anyways, I I don't know um, how other people feel, but I I just think that. We're doing a lot of work um, in opening the snack bars and hiring somebody to run it for very little money. And I think that it would be wiser for us to go after some vendors and bring them in and have them take care of the food. And um, we either take a percentage or we rent out the snack bar to a vendor. I mean, I'll, I'll speak for the, uh, I'll just speak for John Pond, those folks, the Lakeville, Free Lake softball people like to run that themselves. Nice little fundraiser for them for making improvements to the park. Uh, I even reached out to them to see if they'd want to give that up, but I, I don't think that's the way I'm going to head, up, head on that park. I think I'll keep it with them and I'll, I'll speak to them. But for them, it's a nice money raiser for the activities they've done at the park as well uh, already and the improvements they've made. So um, unless you want to talk about Clear Pond or or Ted Williams. I don't well, know if there's anybody who'd be interested in Ted Williams. Uh, Scott, you got a, some experience on that one. I know it was a lot of work to run it in the past. Um, but, but was it not run by the the parents who volunteered? Not by a, not by a, um, a vendor, right? No, no, it was by the, 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 the teams themselves, the parents yeah. uh, doing that. And, and it's been closed and they're not, uh, their story, using it for storage, and at uh, Clear Pond, they took out, there were hot dog machines. There's some things besides Nellie's office, um, a lot of equipment. I don't know if that belongs to Clear Pond or just to the parks in general. Okay. There's like a popcorn machines and hot dog machines and all that next door in that storage area. So there is uh, equipment in there um, for anyone that, Probably, uh, you know, any vendor or any any person that thinks that they can add more to Clear Pond or even Ted Williams, if somebody's willing to start up that snack bar and open it up, since you're going to have more teams there. I don't know. It's up to Scott. I mean, he he might know more about it um, in terms of whether the teams will run their own or not. Scott, any comments on that? I, I don't think you're going to find the interest. Um, when I ran the snack bar, there was baseball on all the fields um, seven days a week. Uh, we had it every night. Um, and it was more of a convenience for those parents who a lot of times were running from work. Um, it wasn't a huge money maker. We had volunteers and um, we, we paid some of the kids uh, a small amount of money to work. Uh, and they were overseen by parents and myself. Um, we didn't make a ton of money. Um, and now you have fewer teams playing there uh, with Free Lake playing a, a bulk of their games in Freetown and not playing as much at Ted Williams Camp. I don't know if you all were saw it during the springtime, but there were a lot of fields that were open um, a lot of days. Um, people from soccer don't come over to that snack stand. Um, they just don't maybe one or two people, but it, 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 it doesn't, it, it, maybe it's too far of a walk, but they just, they won't come over to that snack stand. Very little. Um, soccer had its own snack stand and now they're talking about bringing in a food truck. So, um, you know, that snack stand, we made a lot of money because it was from eight o'clock in the morning to, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon and you had a captive audience and we did very well. We, we, we were able to buy uniforms and balls and, and all kinds of stuff for the kids. Um, but again, you had to have a core of people. We had about 10 people that were there every day, um, hauling the stuff in and out and manning the snack bars. Because to ask parents to volunteer, they, they'd just as soon thumb their nose at you. 
Um, well, they move, they want to see their kids play. They don't want to run a sack bath. That's it's right. So we try feet. we try to do it and have them stay a half an hour after their game, or come a half an hour before their game, and then they didn't have to be at the snack stand when their kid was playing. Yes, and sir. that worked marginally, but not very good. But you said you made a lot of money. We not... did because we had all volunteer. Right. Okay. There was no cost for any type of labor. It was our kids that were manning it and us. And yeah. there, so it was all all profit. That was the that was a soccer one. I also ran the one at Ted Williams camp. But again, I, you know, there were field there were those fields are being used seven days a week. Now they're lucky if they use three or four. Okay. So, I, I, I can't see anybody personally, I can't see anybody coming in there and making money at that snack stand. Do you, uh, Scott, do you think that we would be better off if we know the schedule of the teams and asking food trucks to come in and take a percentage? The problem is you don't want a food truck driving out there. You oh, know, no. you I, 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 no. would, I would think like in the parking lot, you know. I, 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 I understand what you're saying, Paula. The problem yeah. is people don't want to walk. People oh. don't want to walk 20 feet to a trash can. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, it's, it's a fact. I, I've been down there for 20 years and I've yeah. seen it firsthand. You know, they'll leave their cups and, 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 and coffee cups and donut wrappers on the side of the field instead of walking 20 feet to the trash can. So, 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 so just to get us back on track, the, the discussion was about the Loon Pond people themselves. So we say that Loon Pond, excuse me, not uh, Boston Tavern people are out of the uh, concession no, uh, no, consideration. He's, he's asking me questions I can't answer. That's what I'm telling you. I can't, I can't tell him. I can't tell him what kind of sales he's going to have and what, what he should sell. Like, I don't, I, I don't know that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I can suggest stuff, but He's worried, you know, he's going to have to staff it. Does he going to need a full-time person? Is he going to need a part-time person? You know, he's going to have to move stuff in and out of it every night because people will break in. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of other things to think about, you know, with him taking it over. Is he going to make enough money to, to make it worth his while? I, listening to Scott, I'm going to say probably not. I don't well, know. Maybe we could show him the schedule and he can make the decision for himself. True. I mean, yeah, I, I told him that I would talk to him again he was going to you know think about it and i'd get back to him you know so but is, he, is he looking at fall or spring or both i mean i don't know spring obviously is more ball plays i'm assuming than it is in the fall so do we need to have this discussion later because it's not going to impact us until april well i think it would he could make a decision if the the busiest time was you know the next two months then that right. might be the time that he would want to be involved if i was making food i'd want to be there at the busiest possible time it'll be busy on saturdays right so so saturday would be the day you know, for the that's next what... two months it'll be busy on saturdays down there but right. soccer's already asked us permission to have a food truck down there instead of them running a snack stand well maybe somebody that's in the food truck business i mean it seems to me when you can walk into a place and, and make the stuff rather than be in a small confined food truck i mean when i walked in that snack bar there's plugs everywhere there's two windows i mean there's space in there it's it seems pretty advantageous to be able to make some food in there if you're doing that and you got a bunch of people there all saturday yeah um, but that's that's the baseball one tony the soccer people aren't going to go over to that snack stand they're just not going to do it take it from me i've been there we've done it you're not so going to live off you're not so going to live off the soccer people coming over to that snack stand I can well, guarantee you. But, but baseball, you're saying, is filled all Saturday? Not in the fall. The fall baseball is very slow. That's so not my point. So There's the, the, no baseball on Saturdays? I don't know. I don't have the schedule, but it's it's a lot slower than the spring. The busy time for baseball is in the spring. Well, mm -hmm. The two teams that are coming in, when are they coming in? For the fall or the spring? They're coming in for the for the fall. Okay, and would they come on Saturday, Sunday? Uh, most of the games will be on Saturday with a, with a game, one game on Sunday. Okay, um, and uh, do they not play soccer on Sunday also? Just the women. Yeah. Do you think it would be, uh, if, if uh, Boston Tavern gives us a, an answer this week, I, 
I could give him some numbers for Clear Pond. He didn't give me a yay or nay. He wasn't counting it out. But I, obviously, he's more concerned about the volume at Ted Williams' camp so that it would be uh, too financially feasible for them. But if it didn't work out, would we be looking at um, food trucks? Because, you know, I, it seems like that's what's going on these days. And that's where the money is. So I'm just saying if we get turned down from Bloom Pond, um, yeah, from uh, Boston Tavern, do we have a, uh, a backup, a second plan? I say no, we do not. No plan right now. I know is if, if if Boston Tavern says no, we're back to where we we started from. So okay. I guess it, it, Donnie, if you've been dealing with, you said Matt, if he wants to meet with either Scott or myself, that's we'll do it someday. We'll tell him what we know. That's okay. all we can do. So get this thing, put this thing to bed one way or the other. How's that? I, I can do right? that. Thank okay. you, ma'am. Thank you. All right, moving on to old business. Uh, update on Lakeville Haunted House. Uh, besides the people going to be taking the contents, roughly in the middle of October, it's going to be coming down or, or a little earlier. I'll have a date for sure from uh, Nate, but he's working on that now. But there's no abatement activities needed, so the next step is to uh, to take her down. Uh, next one, Lakeville Arts and Music Festival updates. I think this is Tony. The brochures. Oh, the brochures are, I, I have uh, the brochures just about done. Um, Everything was, we all added a piece. I told you I didn't look on Doc. Well, I, I, I have the brochure and I, I need a little bit of information on John Palm and Ted Williams camp. Yeah, oh, I'll, I'll give you stuff in. for mine. What, what do you need on Ted Williams camp? I didn't get any information from you. I sent you a, I didn't get it from you, Scott. Okay. What's the drop dead date? When does it need to be done? I'll send you an email right now, Scott, just so you have my email. That's the correct one. It's the same one that Nelly uses. So it, where are you sending it to me? Um, let's see. Scott at Bridgewood Benoit. Okay. What's the drop dead date you need to stop by? I need it ASAP. Have it tomorrow because I have to pr print it and stuff. Right, I'll get it this week. Again, I'll, I'll send it again. All right. Uh, if that's all in it, uh, next one corresponds from the clerk. Nelly, that's a Wampson Elementary request for parking lot use. Yes, this is their annual request. They're having their open house on September 30th, which is what? That is a Thursday. Um, they're looking to use the parking lots. Well, they'll have three buses shuttling families to and from. It'll be from 545 until 8 p.m. There is nothing else scheduled at the lodge or anything on that day. What time? 545 to 8 p.m. They might want to go to the parking lot over near the tennis club, uh, tennis courts, because there are lights on those parking lots. If it's going to be at nighttime, that's just yeah. a suggestion uh, versus using... The, the the soccer parking lot is Completely whatever you're going to get from the police department. Yes. I can notate that to them. They can try to put that out um, in a communication to the parents attending. Plus you have two parking lots there. Yep. Does anybody have any problem with them using the parking lots? Nope. No, we never have. All right, Nelly. They're all good. Okay, thank you. Nelly, next item. The next item. <laughs> Today I received some correspondence from our Board of Health. There is a food truck looking to park at Ted Williams Camp every Saturday, beginning this coming Saturday. So the Board of Health was working on getting all the uh, required documentations and inspections and everything. This food truck is out of Westport, so they have to do everything again for Lakeville. Um, uh, we found out that it was uh, the soccer club would like them to come every Saturday to feed the families, basically, is, is what's going on. Um, so the Board of Health wanted to double check with us to make sure that this was okay. 
since it seemed like it was more of a consistent basis versus just a one-off visit of a food truck for, uh, you know, an afternoon or something. Uh, that would be doing the, I was, oh, sorry, go ahead, Darlene. Well, that'll take care of anybody wanting to run the concession stand if there's a food truck there. That'll <laughs> be off the table. So I'm assuming that means that the food truck would be there from when soccer is there only. They're not coming to work all day. They're just going to be soccer hours. Is that what I'm understanding? I think we need more information know. on this anyway. Uh, we certainly can't move forward with it until we get some details. Uh, I don't know who the soccer person is who um, looked into this. They may know who it is. Somebody uh, from soccer must have started this discussion with food truck people, right? Not with me. I didn't even heard anything. All I all I heard from soccer was, "What day are you? Are, are the lawn is the grass going to be mowed?" And I said, "Just move the move them every day because it changes all the time. Move the move the nets." That's all I said. So nobody asked me or told me about a food truck at all. So who who has who's got soccer? Is that you, Darlene? Yes. Can you reach out to someone, whoever it may be in soccer, and say what their plans are here? Oh, I can do that. I'll do that yeah. when we're done with the meeting. I, I, when I first I got the Derek, message. Derek Loud is the president. Right. He's the one that asked me, when do I need to move the nets? And I said, every night. Okay. So he didn't let you know about the food truck. So we have, to, no. we have to find out, obviously, what their plans are. Is this a, a road guy coming in, or are they just doing it just in the operation of the, uh, 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 while soccer's on? Have to see what, they, what their plans are. Well, Where I would assume it's it? just well, during yeah. soccer. I would, Joe, that? I would assume it's just during soccer if it's the soccer people that ask for the food truck. I would assume, yeah. but if they, I don't want the guy to set up because they had another four hours of sunlight, I'll park here like local motion parks down the fields. Well, down and the if, street, they, so. if they, but if they do, how would we know? I well, mean, soccer, we, soccer on Saturday, we, excuse me, soccer on Saturday is going to go from eight o'clock in the morning until dark. Right. I mean, how do we control that? Anybody could pull in with a food truck anytime. We have, we, it's out of our control. Yeah, right? I, I, all, I'm, all I'm saying is this one here, we know of a food truck, whatever the name of the company is, I have no idea. Right. Soccer right. wants to right. use them. They've got to get permits. We all know that. Just right. want to know, people mentioned it earlier. We got to know about it. Now we know about it. We just need to know what their plans are. Is it okay. while soccer's operating only? If it is, it's one thing, but I, I don't know that. This hit us out of the blue today. So I need, we need more detail from whoever this Derek person is, but what their plans are for this truck. That's I'll all. Ask, so I'll if we can get that, meeting. then we can vote on it by next meeting. We can have to meet agenda item if you know we want to move forward with it. If there's something they have to vote on the web, but we need details before we okay. give the okay. And they got to go through town anyway. They're still going to get permits. I don't think they had they didn't have a, a permit for Lakeville, I guess, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Westport only or something like that. So right, the soccer start this weekend. Yeah. They cannot have this person this week. They won't have the permits by then anyway. Yeah, so, Board of Health did not feel that they would be all done by this weekend, that there was just no way. Okay. Anything else, Nelly? Uh, that was it. Does anybody have anything else to add they want to go over? I do. Oh. I think everybody received the information from Jesse uh, from Clear Pond. He gave a detailed uh, no, description of the, of the spring, right? I just wanted to ask you. I didn't if, see anything. I, I didn't see anything. I didn't either. Oh, okay. Then I, it was forwarded to Tony and I, and I think that what I'll do is uh, uh, make sure it gets sent on to everybody. I thought it. I thought it went out to everyone, sorry. And the, the only um, comment I wanted to make at this time, because I know we talked about this in the past about um, employees and issues. So uh, Jesse nicely not only did the, uh, sent the staffing schedule and uh, projects and tasks completed and daily receipts, et cetera. But um, I'm focusing on the employee review and it was good that he did an employee review. It's in writing or in it's documented. And I feel that that should go to HR so that we have it on record. If there's ever a 
reason why we should or should not hire an employee back. It, uh, any, any thoughts? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I know that we've got a record, but I think HR is the people that should have this in their files. If there are reviews, then forward them to Clorinda. Pardon? I said, if there, are, if there are reviews done by a supervisor, which would be Jesse, and you guys yeah. agree with them, send them to Clorinda. Okay. Agreed. Oh, wait a minute. Clorinda isn't there anymore, is she? What? She's still there. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. She's going to another position, yeah. Well, she's she's going to be working with Nate. Oh, another okay. position within the town. She's not leaving the town? No, no, no. Oh, she'll just good. be in Nate's office. Uh, so, um, Anything I don't know. Else? Oh. We don't know of any new uh, HR person at this time, do we, Nellie? No, not at this time. I know the position has been posted and they've received applications, but nothing's um, nothing's been decided on yet. So if I send this over to Clorinda's office, uh, who would I send it to? You can just send it to Clorinda. Right now, she's working both in her HR office and starting to work with Nate, so she'll receive it. Good. All right. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Go on once, oh, go on twice. Did Jesse return his keys? I'm sorry. Uh, did were the keys turned in, uh, Nellie, for uh, Claire Pond? He didn't turn them directly into me. Nothing was in the safe. I did see a random key on my desk, but I didn't think he had access to the office. No. Did anybody receive any keys and just leave it on my desk? It should be at least three keys. Right. Yeah, two, two, to the, get... two to the building and one green lock. Yeah. Tony, did, uh, did you get any from Jesse? No. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, um, I'll text him and, and see if he's going to turn them in or how we, you know, but we need them back. Yeah, we need them returned. Mm -hmm. Also, did we have, did he have a phone or no? No, okay. no. All right, Paul will take care of that then. Anything else, if nothing else, I'd like to make a motion. We, oh, we have to have our next meeting. How about the 27th, two weeks from tonight? That work for everybody? Yep. Yeah. What Six time? Third, Nelly, yes, ma'am. Uh, if we do the 27th, the only thing I have to know is that our agenda has to post on Tuesday, the 21st, instead of the Thursday, because the town clerk will be out of her office. The town so The town clerk will be out of her office. Oh. Okay. So we'll need agenda items by the 20th, and then I need to post on the 21st, so the Monday, Tuesday. Okay. Okay. What time would you like it? 7 o'clock or 6.30? Mm -hmm. Seven o'clock. Anybody else? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock has it. Seven o'clock and 927, 21. There'll be the remote meeting. All right. Okay, I'd like to make a motion. We end the meeting of the Lakeville Park Commission. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. Looks like the uh, roll call vote. Darlene, how do you vote? End the meeting. Yes. I want to extend it. You say yes. yes. Scott. Yes. Paula. Paula. She's... Tony. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Have it. I don't want to have to Paula. It's eight seventeen. Lakeville Park Commission meeting has been adjourned. Thank you very much, folks. See you all in two weeks.